What is going on, all you Pokemon Collective Maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and here we are with another video in our series of high demand, low supply cards on TCG Player. And I love this video series for a ton of different reasons, but one of the ones that I love the most about it is because there's no guesswork here, right? This is TCG Player sending us the actual data, right? This isn't Pika Pika Papa doing some back napkin math or anything like that. This is TCG Player raising their hand and saying, hey, listen, all you awesome collectors and investors out there, this is a list of cards and products that we need on our website because it's not in the supply that we want and there is a high demand for it. So they're saying, hey, listen, if you have it in your collection or if it's something that you don't have a lot of interest for, now would be a great time to list it on TCG Player because there's a big demand for it and we just simply don't have enough of it. Now, I think that is really cool because besides eBay, TCG Player is the second biggest platform for buying and selling Pokemon cards, right? Like that's no, that's no secret, that's no surprise to anybody. So when I can get this kind of information directly from a platform with the size, you know, and the credibility of TCG player, to me, it's incredibly impactful, right? Like this is macro level, hobby level information um, of what's going on. And on this channel, I always want us to keep a finger on the pulse of what's going on. I always want us to be playing chess when everybody else is playing checkers. And information like this certainly helps us do that. Now, the other thing that I'm going to say is I don't typically do a video on Saturdays, so I kind of rush to get this one pulled out because I found that the information on here can vary very quickly, right? We have been doing this uh, video series since September. Hard to believe that it's been three months since we've been doing it, but we're learning about a lot of patterns. We're starting to see a lot of trends. And as we continue to do this, we level up our game and we continue to get better and better with digesting the information that we're about to talk about right here. So listen, hey, if that kind of stuff gets you excited, I always do my selfless plug. Like, if you like this kind of stuff, this kind of data approach, hey, hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Questions or comments, drop them down below. Those three small things go a long way in helping my small channel out. Let's me know you appreciate the work that I put in. So without further ado, let's talk about the cards that are on this list. Now, there's no pattern to what TCG Player sends out. I've had lists of 100, I've had lists of 50, this one happens to be a list of 25. Sometimes they're sealed products, sometimes there isn't. Like, I don't really know what to expect when I see this in my inbox and I open it up. Uh, but this month, or this week, uh, we have 25 cards on here, which is really cool. There's also some sealed product. And one of the things that we've seen in the past is kind of when new sets launch, this gets dominated by those new sets. So not long ago, Paradox Rift came out, right? And the, and the list that we had had a ton of Paradox on it. 151 one has been on here a lot. But one of the interesting things about this list and what I like is it's really split into thirds. A third of it is Paradox, right? Because Paradox is still super new. A third of it is 151, right? And that's because 151's on freaking fire right now. Uh, and then a third of it is also just other things. So there's some really interesting cards in here that I absolutely love. I love the diversity. You look down there at the very bottom, you see the Gyarados GX, right? The secret one from Crimson Invasion. Love seeing that. There's a freaking Watsy promo of Snorlax on here. There's a Fates Collide sealed booster pack art bundle on here, which is really cool. I've talked about this a lot on the channel. I think there's a lot of focus on the early era Pokemon cards. I think there's a lot of focus on Sun and Moon and Ultra Modern, but I feel like XY and Black and White is kind of flying under the radar right now. So it was interesting for me uh, to see this uh, booster, booster pack art bundle on here, just kind of popping out of left field. Um, the other thing interesting too is we've talked a lot about 151. A lot 151's been on this list a lot over the last couple uh, series that have come out. This is the first time where we've seen the 151 cards actually start to come down a little bit. You know, 151 is certainly not hard to find. I know a lot of people are getting some great deals on TikTok. That's not necessarily for me, uh, but I know a lot of people are doing that. I know that you can get it out in the wild a lot. I know the Pokemon Center just restocked the Pokemon Center exclusive ETBs. I mean, they sold out like that, but at least they were there for a little bit. So it's not unexpected to start seeing these Pokemon on 151 cards start to normalize a little bit because I know a ton of it's out there and a ton of it is getting ripped, you know. And the other thing that I want to say too, and I'm going to double click on this in the very next slide, but for me, I use this more as a selling tool versus a buying tool. And I talk about that every single time uh, I do this video simply because this lets me identify, hey, what's getting hot now? And especially if I see a card that's popping on this list for the first time, we have seen this time and time and time again, that when a card pops on this list for the very first time, the next time we see it, which usually it does, it's usually on here for at least two, three, four uh, iterations in a row. The next time it almost always goes up in price. So that's really interesting. Now, 
The other thing that I wanted to call out, and I'll go ahead and switch sides so we can talk about it here, is the cards that are where the demand is driven by playability have a very, very strong track record and pattern of growth in the short term. Now, for somebody like me, I'm always very open, very honest, very transparent. I don't play the game. I have no interest in the game. I'm simply here as a collector and as an investor. That's it. But this list gives me insight into some of these really awesome cards that are being driven by the playability, right? When you look at all the cards that are up that are positive, right? You have the last week price, the current week price. You have the last week rank and the current week rank right there uh, in those columns. And then in the green, you see that their percentage change from last video to now. I mean, a lot of these, almost all of these, uh, besides the, the promos or besides the exclusives, are driven by playability, right? You got Switch Cart, you got Squawk Ability, you got Bravery Charm, uh, you know, you got the Minior right there. Um, it is just very interesting to see that these cards... Um, are on here still and that's what they're being driven by so I think that's a big big lesson it's a big takeaway for me and it opens up my collecting and my investing side of things uh, to, to a more diverse Pokemon card portfolio now when I say investing like I'm not investing in these cards these are very short-term cards where they see very short-term price appreciations um, but it is something worth noting if you have them uh, sitting to the side or if it's something where you want to do a quick you know buy and flip for me I don't I don't like to buy and flip you know cheap cards I just don't think when you factor in you know any fees that come with it when you factor in um, shipping and all of that doesn't make sense for me but it is interesting to see how these prices have moved now again as I said earlier you see that Pokemon 151 the four cards that are on here are actually down that's the first time we've ever seen that we've never seen all of the Pokemon 151 cards down so maybe they're starting to normalize a little bit uh, and then sealed product that makes its way onto this list typically does really well so that evolving powers premium collection box that target exclusive it's been on here three videos in a row uh, and it seems to go up a little bit every single time now it's only up one percent uh, versus the last time we looked at it, but still up is up. And it's interesting to see this. Now, one of the ones that was on it uh, in the previous slide was the Pokemon 151 poster collection, right? So it'll be interesting since this was the first month that it was on this video. It'll be interesting to see if that Pokemon 151 poster collection is on the next iteration of this. And if we do see some price appreciation from that. So really interesting thing here and then I don't always double click into the cards on here I don't always drill down into the individual cards but since this is you know kind of an out of left field video I wanted to do that because I thought it was really interesting just to again drill down into these are the cards that are being driven by playability right we talked about switch card we talked about squawk ability we talked about bravery charm and you see that these cards I mean they really have a strong price appreciation so the earlier you can identify these cards as being impactful in the actual TCG game if you're trying to make some money I mean look at switch card right there switch card is up about 50 percent uh over the span of the last four or five months which is incredible you know and switch card is not exactly a new card right like switch card has been out for quite a while so the earlier we can identify these trends and cards with playability you know there's definitely a play there and then you know bravery charm same thing it's like really steady eddie up into the right and then squawkabilly you know i don't know what it is about the card that's making it popped off i tried to do some research and i found that you know it, it plays a big role in uh, a lot of different decks so somebody found it somebody discovered that it was a great card and a great play and look at that really aggressive price jump right like it was following the typical pokemon pop and flop from paldea evolved it was starting to come down in price like we normally see and then all of a sudden it caught fire and it pops up and so for those of us who are saying hey you know i'm not into the game but i certainly am into money you know this 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 video series and these types of um insights into TCG player can really help us with that. Now, a couple of other cards that are on this list that I'm keeping my eye on right here is the Pikachu Greyfeld hat. Oh my gosh, I never did a video on it, but everybody and their mother did videos on it. Everybody had opinions on it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I love this card. Me and my family were fortunate enough. We were able to get two of them. Uh, we were able to pick up a couple of the uh, Pikachu statues. It's actually right here over my shoulder, right over there. Uh, so we, we didn't resell the statues. We thought they were cool. We wanted them for our house and we have them. Uh, and we were able to get a couple of these cards and I'm also going to share this a lot of people were upset that it was in whatever short supply uh, but I'm okay with that you know unless a card is, is is functional within the game then I don't care if everybody doesn't have access to it right like this is a capitalistic society so not everybody's going to win and you know not everybody's going to get a participation trophy so I wasn't hurt at all when not everybody got a Pikachu with Greyfeld hat card now the other two cards on here I'm keeping an eye on are from 151 that big chase Charizard there from 151 you see it had that big run up there uh, up till the end of you know a couple weeks ago and now it's really Really started to come back down again is 151 ever gonna burn out like it's been all gas no brakes here for a long long time in my mind it has to slow down right especially 
game with Christmas coming after Christmas. I have a feeling a whole lot of 151 is going to be gifted around the Christmas holidays and probably into January and February. We're going to see a lot more of it hitting the market. So don't be surprised if Pokemon 151 starts to come down in price. And also, don't be upset about it. Like, who cares? Like, that's part of that's just part of this Pokemon hobby. In the long run, Pokemon 151 is going to be just fine. And then I also have the Squirtle card on here. You all know I am borderline obsessed with that card. I think it's adorable. I think it's cute. I love the fact that it has been able to perform so well. I was actually looking at getting this for one of my kids in a PSA 10 holder for Christmas, but I pulled it up on eBay and they're going for over $200. So if you think I'm paying over $200 for this in a PSA 10 holder right now, you're absolutely Looney Tunes. No freaking way. PSA 10s will come down over time. Guarantee 12 months from now, this will be nowhere near $200 in a PSA 10. It probably won't even be at the $100 mark. So for me, I'm waiting to buy and for you, if you have one and it's not something that you want in your long-term collection, could be a great time to go ahead and flip it and reinvest it into some other things that you think could be great. So with all that being said, this has been a really fun video. I actually enjoy doing things out of turn. It gave me the reason to get up in the morning and really turn on the Pokemon brain. Uh, but I hope you guys have an epic weekend. Tomorrow on Sunday, we have a great video coming out about all the overall performance of the Sword and Shield market uh, over the last month. And it's got some really, really cool stuff. So if you want to be the first ones to identify that and see that video, hey, hit that subscribe button. Questions are comments, drop them down below. And as always, I hope you have an epic one. Thanks, everybody.